the transition in going from that dentist, from an entrepreneur to a dentist to that executive leader and how that works. So how do you help support people around that? And what are some of the pitfalls that you're seeing there? Yeah. Um, so this, it, it, it's an eerie parallel to um, a book that has been revised multiple times called The E-Myth. I'm sure you read it by Michael Gerber. It came out in, I don't know, maybe the 80s or 90s even. But the, the E-Myth is, e, e stands for entrepreneur, or entrepreneurial. And it talks about a business owner um, from a, a standpoint of what he calls the technician to the manager to the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, and the technician is, and they use a bakery as an example. And it's a great book for your audience. If you yeah. haven't read it, called I haven't e read that one. I'm, I'm going to check okay. it out. Michael Gerber is G E R B E R. If memory serves me correct. If you Google E myth, you're going to find it. So it's an easy read. Um, and the premise is that, that entrepreneurs start out um, performing the craft. And in his example, the, the person who owns the bakery, she's so excited about it. She is a baker. A dentist that owns a dental practice is a dentist. He or she is working on patients, you know, doing clinical work. Um, then you transition to a phase of, of like starting to replace yourself in a productive capacity and you have to manage the growth of the business. And then when you have productive capacity taken care so of. Would, just real quickly, just for me. Um, so the baker, so I'm awesome at baking. I love baking cakes, but now I need to start managing payroll and, and moving the funds around. That's the manager portion, that's, correct? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Man, managing the bakery, um, uh, you know, hiring additional bakers to work with you to expand the productive capacity and marketing the business right i mean mm -hmm. um you know why does somebody want to come to your bakery or your your dental practice so there's there's the management aspect mm -hmm. and then the entrepreneurial side is the the leadership and the growth piece do you want to own one more than one bakery or more than one uh dental practice so you know a dentist um working in the chair on patients uh every hour on the hour that that business is open let's face it. I mean, they, they generate, they usually generate a lot of, uh, revenue and they usually make a healthy amount of personal income, but when they're practicing their craft, working in the business on patients, they're not thinking about marketing. They're not thinking about running a business or anything else. They're only thinking about cutting the crown prep that's right in front of them. And that's what they do. 35 to 40 hours during the week. And then they work on the business with whatever time is left over. And you couple the fact that you couple that with the fact that dentistry as a profession is incredibly physically demanding. Mm -hmm. It is hard. Yeah. It is, you know, physically taxing. And you have and to be fully present, right? You don't get completely. To be, you can't be multitasking. No, no. So, so, you know, they, a lot of people that, that uh, we, we work with or who we talk with, um, you know, are in some phase of building a group. And one of the reasons they want to build a group is because they, they don't want their personal income to be 100% dependent upon their physical productive capacity. And I think that is smart. Yeah. Diversifying, okay. right? It's, it's, yeah, you make, I'm making a lot of money, but it, it's one bad accident and all of it's gone. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, you get a tremor in your hand or, or, you know, something happens with one of your shoulders or some of them have vision problems and depth perception and, and all, you know, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, so, so deleveraging the business and your personal income away from you being the the sole clinical um, uh, economic producer is, is wise. So now um, as they start to transition themselves out of the chair, um, the challenge becomes, well, wait a minute, if I got to pay an associate to do the work that I used to do, then how much is left over for me and my family? So how do we reverse engineer the numbers that create a soft landing so that someone doesn't take a six figure income hit to replace themselves in productive capacity. So that 
understanding the impact they need to make on growing the profitability of the business to offset the cost of employing that associate is critically important. Now, mm-hmm. nothing goes according to plan ever, yeah. but if you have no idea the volume you need to make up to offset that, you know, hope is not a strategy, as we'd like to say. Yeah, that's not a good model. Yeah. 